Our urban exploration team has found a way into Buffalo's boarded up Church of the Transfiguration, once the cornerstone of Buffalo's large Polish Catholic community. Timmy and Bryce are high up in the building rafters, looking for the church bells that may or may not still be here. Bells. Does it look like there could have been bells there? Um, no, I don't think there are. Is there any view of anything? Yeah, it's a beautiful view of the entire structure. I'm gonna cruise over so I can get to the staple and take a look at the bells. What? You can come over, right? Cruise across. You want me to follow your lead right now? Yeah, just come on over. Just you have a good, healthy sense of balance. The Trans Church steeple is 180 feet high, which means that Timmy's balancing act is taking place close to 150 feet above the street. Like what? The stairs? Timmy's a world-class climber. Those aren't very fun, right? Please do not try this at home. When I'm on top of the church beam, there's definitely a healthy feeling of fear. If I wasn't afraid, then I wouldn't be aware of the objective hazards. No, it looks like the louvers are are too thin for me to fit in, but I think I actually see some cables coming down from, from like a floor. It's, it could be the bells, I'm not sure, but this has got to be where they are in the steeple. Okay, come on back and we'll get up there another way. Timmy and Bryce soon find their way over and up into the church steeple. Here they are, we got them. You got them? Yeah. They're actually here? Uh-huh. No way. They didn't get rid of them, which is surprising. Oh, wow. Their quest has paid off. And both guys know that the bells here have a relevance that goes far beyond today's exploration. Well, the first thing they do when they shut down a Catholic church to fully deconsecrate it is remove the bells. And so I, that's why I was totally surprised to find that the bells were still there, because technically that means that it's still a Catholic church. It's just a little bit of insurance, but the fact that these bells are still here might help save this unique piece of history. Hey, this one's 1893, dude. Oh, this one's filled with crap. I wonder how that, maybe it sounds more like instead of dong, it sounds like dung. How do you figure you ring one of these babies? Let's really rail the hammers. Okay. Just push the hammers okay. super hard. Yeah, one, two, three. Let's go back down and wait for so we can meet up. I'd never been able to ring bells like that. I mean, it felt like I was calling the congregation in to pray or something. Accomplished our mission. Yeah, nice work. We rang them. We called the sheep home. Brittany, don't hey, get guys, nice work. We heard the bells. You cool. hear that? That's great. Nice. All right, how about getting something to eat, you guys? Buffalo wings. Yeah. After their successful church exploration, the team's earned itself a visit to the Anchor Bar. In this hallowed place some 40 years ago was first served up the sauciest of bar foods, the Buffalo Wing. While they're here, they hope to get some leads to guide them to Buffalo's enormous grain elevators, which at one time were actually considered a national secret. But first, a taste and the story of Buffalo's most famous treat. Bringing suicide leaves out. There's no way I'm going to have one. I'm going to leave to Britain. She likes the hot sauce. You see the seeds? It's a pepper seed right there. It was a hot October night in 1964 here at the Anchor Bar that owner Teresa Bellissimo first dipped some chicken wings into a spicy chili sauce of her own creation as an improvised late night snack. He likes the drumsticks. <laughs> I kind of feel it now. You certainly do. Oh, dang! Hot legs. Hot legs. Hot legs. <laughs> Hot breast, hot. chicken breast. Hot chicken hot. breast. Yeah. Hot. <laughs> yeah. Super All right, here we are. We're at the home of the Buffalo Wings, the Anchor Bar. Those guys are over there macking wings, drinking beers. But we got to get to the bottom of this. Where are the grain elevators? We got to get some information. Let's get to know some of the people of Buffalo. Do you know anything about the grain elevators here in town? We hold grain out of there. We hold grain there. We hold grain out. Yeah. And where was the grain coming from? It was coming from the wheat belt out west. Yep. And was it coming in by ships? Yeah. Coming across the lake. Coming across the lake. We then load it and take it over to the plants along there, and they make all kinds of stuff out. Where would they be in relation to us, the home of the Buffalo Wings? You gotta wing? go over the Skyway. Okay. 
Okay, let's just throw this guy away. You can't miss him. Yeah, it's obvious. Uh, giant granaries. Yeah, overlooking the lake. Buffalo may be best known for inventing chicken wings. But as Timmy found out, what made Buffalo one of America's wealthiest cities at the turn of the century was an entirely different commodity, grain. From the Midwestern breadbasket, grain was loaded onto trains or barges that came straight to Buffalo, where it was offloaded and stored in massive silos until it continued on south or east along the Erie Canal, and eventually onto Europe. So, so what Sam told me was, he used to work down here, he owns a construction company now, and he was a little fuzzy on the details, but he said something about the fact that such Barges would pull up that were so big that they would lower three giant bulldozers inside the hull to push the grain into the elevator where it would go up and fill the really? silo. Wow. That's how much wheat grain they're pulling out of the Midwest. That's why the United States could basically feed the world. Buffalo's prime waterfront location along Lake Erie and the Buffalo and Niagara rivers made it the ideal grain port. The grain elevators that lined the rivers along the city's south side were so vast and so efficient that at their height they could store close to 50 million bushels of grain. That's enough to make a loaf of bread for everyone on earth. In 1915, Buffalo built its biggest concrete grain elevator, a quarter mile long behemoth called Concrete Central. What do we know about this place? Who talked Concrete about Central shut down in 1966. It's now a 40-acre industrial relic that's a haven for graffiti artists and paintballers. Yeah. You sure this is the way, Brett? This is definitely... Hey, uh... Hey, you guys, you want to split up? This place is pretty big. Yeah. Okay. It's a smart move to split up if they're going to figure out how this rusted-over giant once worked. We can see that. We'll see you in a while. And we'll get some that uh, vertical perspective. Brittany and Timmy will explore the inside of the structure and try to get up top to see how the cement silos were filled. Bryce and Steve will stick to the outside perimeter of Concrete Central to figure out how the grain came off the ships. From the riverside of the structure, they get a good view of the most important parts of the grain elevators. What we're seeing behind me right now are concrete storage bins, which are part of the grain elevators. So the grain would come up from the ships that were brought in from Lake Superior through Lake Huron, Lake Erie, moored here, and then the, the big grain elevators would come down the marine legs and they would pull up the grain to the top and they would go to the top of these storage bins. When the St. Lawrence Seaway opened in 1959, that provided a direct route from the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean, and that made Buffalo obsolete. So then Buffalo really had uh, lost almost all of its economic basis, and the city started deteriorating, eventually leaving behind these really monstrous relics we see today with, you know, no hope for their future use. Concrete Central, like all but one of Buffalo's grain elevators, has long ceased operations. But its hulking ruins remain, too expensive for the city to tear down. On the other side of Concrete Central, Brittany and Timmy are trying to find a way up into the complex. What's in here, Brittany? There's all these weird paint splashes all over the walls, Timmy. Little do they know, they're soon to find out exactly where those paint splatters come from and discover why Concrete Central was once considered so vital to the national interest that its very construction was kept top secret.